Thank you, Lindsay, and, and thank you to the organizers of this meeting. Um, unlike the last two companies who spoke, uh, who are publicly traded companies and have been around for several years, Intellia is a, a very new company. And so what I'd like to do today is take the next few minutes to really introduce you to our organization and gives, give you a sense of where we're headed in the future. So Intellia Therapeutics, we are a CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing company. Uh, and we are focused primarily on delivering really transformative therapies to patients uh, with severe genetic diseases. And as I mentioned, we're a very young company. So we were formed through an investment by Atlas Ventures last summer in July. Uh, but we have rapidly grown and um, secured two partnerships to date. Um, and we've also secured a Series B funding um, earlier this summer of $70 million, which will give us a, a, an opportunity to bring these uh, therapies forward. Now, I mentioned we have uh, two partnerships on currently. The first is with Caribou Biosciences. Now, they were the first CRISPR-Cas9 company to be spun out of Jennifer Doudna's lab in Berkeley. And in addition to, in addition to uh, outlicensing the foundational IP for human therapeutic use of the CRISPR-Cas9 platform, we also have an ongoing services agreement with Caribou, which will provide Intellia access to uh, improvements and uh, new directions to the CRISPR-Cas9 platform. In addition to this... Uh, services agreement, we have a great collaboration with Novartis Pharmaceuticals in the field of hematopoietic stem cells and uh, their CAR T cell program as well. And so, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are really a platform company using gene, a new novel gene editing uh, technology, but we are really truly focused on delivering transformal medicines to patients. And to that end, we've really uh, pulled together a great management team with uh, a breadth and depth across uh, the pharmaceutical industry and a real seasoned team. And I think one of the key points is we were able to bring on John Leonard, who uh, retired from AbbVie after 22 years as the head of R&D to lead our medical efforts. And we've also uh, brought on Jose Rivera, who was, a, was instrumental in defending the Humera IP uh, estate at uh, AbbVie as well, and he's a, a critical member of our team in the gene editing field. In addition, we have Tom Barnes, our chief scientific officer, who has a breadth of experience in uh, biologics across a number of biotech startups in the Cambridge area, and David Morrissey, our chief technology officer, who brings with him a depth of understanding of RNA therapeutics from his and delivery from his time at Cerna and Novartis, and. Satna Srivastava is our chief financial officer who spent over 10 years as a biotech analyst in New York. And last but not least, our uh, CEO, Ness in Birmingham. In addition to this really well-seasoned management team, we have a great founder base of, of key scientists in the CRISPR-Cas9 field. Our co-founder, Jennifer Doudna, published the seminal paper in the field in 2012, really demonstrating how CRISPR-Cas9 can uh, be used as a genome editing tool. In addition, we work closely with Rudolf Barangu, Eric Sontheimer, and uh, Luciano Marafini in terms of really understanding the science behind the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing platform. And as we move towards indications and developing products, we're bringing on new scientists and with uh, expertise in cell types as well as indications. And this is evidenced uh, by our um, co-founder Derek Rossi with his great experience in CRISPR-Cas9, but also in the hematopoietic stem cell field. So I spent a lot of time setting up the company, um, and now I'm going to go a little bit into CRISPR-Cas9 and, and the platform. And really, CRISPR-Cas9 is, is really uh, a, a platform, a gene editing platform shaped by nature and millions of years of evolution. It started, it is actually a primordial immune system used by bacteria to defend themselves against viruses, which creates site-specific cuts in the viral DNA. And one of the great things about this system is that it is a very simple system. It is a, a single protein, a single protein 
and coupled with an RNA guide, an RNA sequence. And although the protein does confer a bit of, of site specificity, the main site specificity for the DNA cut is conferred by the RNA guide sequence, which allows for uh, really tuning where you want to place the cut by changing the RNA sequence instead of having to go back and re-engineer a protein each time. So the protein stays constant, the RNA changes, and that changes the specificity of the gene edit. And so when I talk about gene editing, what am I really talking about? Well, at, at the most basic level, uh, the Cas9 protein is an endonuclease which causes a double-stranded break in the DNA. And then after that, the cellular repair mechanisms take over, which oftentimes leads to the addition or deletion of a, a small number of nucleotides, leading to a frame ship mutation in the, in, at the site of, of the cut. And so at the most basic level, uh, gene editing it can knock out your gene of interest. You can also use two guides to cut out a, piece of, a small piece of DNA, creating a larger deletion. In addition, you can use uh, two guides to cut out a piece of toxic DNA, say in the case of a CAG repeat, thereby restoring normal function of the gene. So in addition to these basic uh, double-stranded breaks leading to uh, small mutations, we can also use the cellular machinery for DNA repair for uh, more complex gene edits, including homology-directed repair of specific mutations. And this is accomplished by including a short sequence of, of DNA with the wild-type sequence near the site of the cut. And we can also insert whole, uh, whole genes um, at site-specific points, whether they be a safe harbor site or perhaps more powerfully at the site of the endogenous locus, allowing for the endogenous regulatory elements to, to work on the expression of that gene. So I mentioned before, there are other gene editing techniques out there, and they are all very powerful techniques. Uh, but we think the advantage of the CRISPR-Cas9 technique is really in its simple and rapidly optimizable format, and that it can be scalable. And that is because the, the DNA recognition sequence is largely in an RNA format, and you can synthesize large number of RNAs relatively cheaply and relatively quickly and screen a large number of potential cutting sites um, in, a, in a very efficient manner. So we can cut the DNA. But what we need to do is get the Cas9 protein at the site of the nucleus in the cell type that we need uh, the cutting to take place. And to that end, we're exploring both ex vivo applications and in vivo applications of this technology. On the ex vivo setting, we're using electroporation. And again, this has been clinically proven for HSCs and T cells, and it's, it's the path we're taking forward. But we're also exploring other and novel mechanisms of getting uh, the, the CRISPR-Cas9 complex into uh, ex vivo cells. We're also a um, exploring in vivo applications of this technology. And as I mentioned before, um, we have an ongoing relationship with Novartis. And as part of that uh, relationship, we have access to their library of lipid nanoparticles, both for our own internal use as well as any um, uh, partners that we would uh, like to take on. And these lipid nanoparticles have high in vivo potency, as well as they're biodegradable, so reducing the chance of toxicity. And some of them are currently in advanced clinical studies. Now, as you know, uh, lipid nanoparticles tend to go to the liver. So as we think about putative indications for this CRISPR-Cas9 uh, editing in the in vivo setting, we are first exploring uh, liver indications. We have not selected our indications of interest yet, but we are taking what we're calling a sentinel approach. The idea is that the indications that we go after will not only be relevant from a uh, patient perspective, addressing a significant unmet need uh, for patients and potentially applying a cure to their disease, but they will also teach us something about our ability to, to edit in the context of the organ we've selected. So in the case of liver disorders, we've, we've identified three sets of sentinel indications. The first is a knockout, and in those indications, some examples might be hepatitis B, uh, PCSK9 for hypercholesterolemia, and TTR. We've also selected as a second set of sentinel indications those that require repair of a mutation. And again, that be, might be uh, PKU or hemochromatosis. 
In addition, we're also looking to be able to make insertions, uh, site-specific insertions. And again, indications like that might be hemophilia A or B. But again, we're, we're identifying individual indications that will become products, but also will teach us something about the platform. In terms of ex vivo, these, these programs are largely currently done with our partner Novartis. And in terms of the HSC approach, we're exploring hemoglobinopathies as well as primary immunodeficiencies. And in the field of the, the CAR-T space, we're really working to help them improve the efficiency and manufacturability of their existing CAR-T program. So as we think about the future, um, we are today looking at a number of liver programs to move forward, and we're also looking at potential future areas of development. And these are largely going to be defined by our ability to deliver to those target organs. Uh, and as that ability becomes more realistic, either through viral or non-viral uh, methods, we'll expand into those areas. On the ex vivo side, we're, again, working with Novartis on HSCs and CAR-Ts, but we're actively exploring partnerships in, the, in immuno-oncology, TILs, NK cells, as well as circulating T cells. In addition, looking at Tregs for autoimmunity, uh, opportunities for protein replacement, as well as exploring uh, our ability to bring our technology to other stem cells. And when we think of future collaborations, we're really looking for strategic partners that will help us bring forward the promise of CRISPR-Cas9 technology. We recognize as a small company that's just about a year old, um, the, we can't really fully develop uh, this technology as, as well as it could be, and we will need strategic partners for that. And so we're looking for folks who can bring opportunities to expand to new organs with delivery technology or expertise, as well as um, be adventurous with us as we explore some of the more complex edits. And that's about it. I'm happy to take uh, questions after the session. Thank you.